Are you guys tired of the Ender 5 S1 being hard to use thanks to its color LCD that it came with? Well, today we're going to install our 12864 kit to bring this printer to life and give you access to all the features in our Unify 2 firmware to make this printer run fast and efficient. So like many printers that Creality puts out, they put these nice looking color LCDs on the printers, but the problem is they're very limited. If you guys are familiar with us, you already know that we're a big fan of changing these out to the 12864 screens because it gives you access to all of your firmware settings and doesn't have any limitations like the color LCD. In this video guide, we're gonna go over assembling the LCD, putting it on the printer from start to finish, we're also going to go over flashing the firmware and for this kit we have a pre-compiled file to make updating super easy if you're just upgrading a stock machine and we're also going to go over compiling the firmware from the source code which is also included with the kit if you guys are in a country where shipping is too expensive to ship the lcd kit to you we do have the stl file available for a couple dollars on our website as well as the firmware if you purchase the lcd kit from us three months of the firmware and updates are included if you guys purchase the firmware with the technical support or you get the full kit, you will get access to our support team where if you need help with your configuration, installation, or troubleshooting, or even compiling the firmware, our team will be able to assist you with that. So now I'm gonna show you guys how to put the LCD kit on the printer and then we're gonna go over the firmware. Now, if you notice here on my printer, I already have our 3v3 fix module on here because this board has a 3.3 volt rail issue. I will need to move this wire over to this header once I take this stock LCD out. So I'm gonna take this out and then move that over before we proceed with the rest of the LCD insulation. You can go ahead and remove this cable. Now we're going to go ahead and assemble the new LCD housing. Inside the box, you'll have two cables and a knob. We are not going to use the cables that come with the screen. Instead, we're going to use the longer cable that's included with the kit. Take the screen out of the bag, place it into the mount. And then we're going to install the four screws in the corners here. One, two, three, four, using included coarse thread screws. Your LCD should look like this at this point. Go ahead and press the knob onto the encoder. You should be able to feel it click when you press it. Now on the top side of the printer, we need to pop this extrusion cover out. If you want to put this back in, you can cut this so it fills the sides of the screen housing. I'm going to put the bolts into the holes here. And then with my finger holding the bolt from falling out, just put one of the T-nuts on each bolt a couple turns, just like that. Now make sure the T-nuts are in this orientation. And now we're gonna put the mount over the hole where the old screen was. Now, if you notice, we can slide this back and forth. So make sure it's centered and then tighten these two screws down on either side. When you turn these go fast. So the nut rotates in the extrusion. And you can verify if it bit if you pull up on it and it doesn't come out. I'm going to go ahead and cut this to fit the new LCD. There we go. The extrusion covers are back in place. Now we need to flip this back up because we have to connect the LCD to the control board. Now we're going to take the cable and connect it to the EXP3 header. I'm going to orient it so the keyed portion is facing down away from the cable, just like this, so it's easier to install. And then this end plugs into the 10-pin header on the control board. 
Now, if you have some zip ties, you can go ahead and secure this to the original cable mounting position. And now we can go ahead and put the bottom cover back on. The last thing we need to do is update the firmware and then we're done with the kit. When putting the cover back on, make sure to reconnect the fan to the fan port. Go ahead and peel the protective film off the LCD. And now we're going to update the firmware. Now we do provide a pre-compiled bin file if your printer is stock and all you have is the LCD. If you have a customized setup where you've modified the machine or you want to make changes to it, then you can compile from the source code that's included. I'm going to go over both steps right now. So to get the firmware, if you guys did purchase the LCD kit from us, you will get a free three month download access for the firmware. And you can go to my account and go to downloads. We also will send you a download link in your email. If you checked out as a guest, you can use that. But since I have it on my actual account, I'm gonna go to my account and then downloads and find the Unify 2 firmware for Ender 5 S1 printers. So I'm going to download this and then extract it to a folder on my computer. So I'm gonna download this and come right back. Now at this point with the firmware, if you have a completely stock printer, meaning you're just putting the LCD kit on there, the update's really simple. You can just go to the firmware folder that is in the files you extracted and then go into pre-compiled firmware and you're gonna copy this STM32F4 update folder to your SD card, put the SD card in the printer and turn it on and it'll just update. So I'm gonna show you guys that right now. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to compile your own version if you wanna play with different features that we have in the firmware, such as input shaping or adding on different things like, let's say you change the extruder and you need to change your E-steps. I'll go through where to change that and all the features we have, as well as how to compile it. So, but for now, I'm gonna show you guys how to do the quick and easy update, which is using the pre-compiled file. So I'm gonna take an SD card and put this into my computer. The SD card needs to be formatted with a FAT32 file system and a 4096 allocation unit size. So as you can see here, I put the SD card into my computer. I'm gonna right click here and hit format. So I'm gonna hit start and then okay. And it's going to format the card. Once the format's complete, hit okay. Close it out. And then I'm gonna copy this folder Go to the SD card and paste the folder onto my SD card. Now, if we look in the SD card here, you'll see we have a bin file and that's our firmware. So let's go ahead and take the card out of the computer. I'm gonna switch over to the printer. We're gonna put the card into the printer. Turn the power on. And now the printer is gonna flash the firmware. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to take a second, but then you'll see the logo pop up on the screen here. And now the firmware is updated. So at this point, the install is complete and the printer is ready to use. I can go ahead and test this by pressing the menu button here, going to motion and then auto home. And you'll see the printer go through the auto home sequence. So I'm going to move this up so you guys can see. And now just like that, the printer's all updated and I can print with it now. Now let's say you wanna start messing with the firmware, whether that's playing with new features or maybe you made some modifications to the printer that require changes to the firmware. Our firmware supports that as well. So we're going to go into Visual Studio Code and if you need to set this up, you can go to vscode.th3dstudio.com and we have a full guide that's a video guide as well as a text guide as well. So I have Visual Studio Code, I'm gonna hit open. I'm gonna to go to the path where I extracted the firmware. So I'm gonna go and select the firmware folder. Do not click any of these, just immediately click select folder. Once the firmware opens, you're going to want to click the little arrow next to the Marlin folder here, and then double click the configuration.h file. 
Now, if you wanted to compile firmware for your completely stock Ender 5 S1, all you have to do is uncomment this line by removing these two forward slashes. Now, in Visual Studio Code, when you enable something, you'll notice as you get rid of the comment line here, it'll light up. Now, let's say you're adding our EZABL on, which we'll be adding support for in the near future. You could then do that by just uncommenting this line and it will tell it you have an EZABL. We also have support for our Easy Neo pixels. So if you wanted to wire up our RGB lighting kit to this board, you could. It does have extra IO pins to do that. We also have options here where you can just disable the stock filament sensor if for some reason you're having issues with it. We have different settings here for the probing speeds and the edges and the points. So if you want to have a bigger grid, you can change that. If you notice here, uh, these EZABL advanced settings also apply to other probes, including the stock probe on this printer. So let's say I wanted a 5x5 five five grid instead of a 3x3. Three three, I would just change the EZABL points from 3 to 5, and that will give me a 5x5 five five grid. In my experience on a printer with this bed size, the 3x3 three three works fine, so I'm going to leave it like that. Now, if you are running our EZABL Pro or higher sensor, so the EZABL Pro or the NG, you can also run super fast probing, which will make the probe take readings quicker. I wouldn't recommend this with the stock CR Touch. If you scroll down here, we have a ton of other options. We have options to set your different extruder E-step values. We also have a way to reverse the extruder motor in case you change it to a different extruder that needs reversing. We have thermistor settings and other different options. So I'd highly recommend just kind of taking a scroll through here because there's a lot of cool features to make the firmware do exactly what you want as you're modifying the printer. A couple of the little freebies that don't cost you anything and you can play with are input shaping. This is a really cool technology that's in our latest firmwares. What input shaping does is allows the printer to print faster while maintaining print quality. If you want to read up on that, you can go to our link right here and that will explain how to do it as well as how to run the calibration print. We also have different options here for like PID bed control. We have a finer baby stepping option, which is our live Z adjustment. We also have linear advance, manual mesh leveling in case you don't have a probe. And then we also have the power loss recovery if you really want to use that. It's not a feature I like, but some people do like this and they don't mind that it causes extra wear on their SD card. So let's say you made a bunch of changes and you want to compile your firmware. Once you do that, you can just click the little checkbox in the lower left hand corner, which will then build the firmware. At this point, it's going to pull down some files from the Internet if this is the first time you're compiling. It may take anywhere from 30 seconds up to five minutes, depending on the speed of your computer and your Internet connection. So I'm going to let my computer go ahead and build this and we'll come right back. So you can see here my computer built the firmware. And if you want to find the file that you're going to put on the SD card, it's going to be under the PIO build and then STM32F401RE Creality. Now you can either just drag this file to an SD card right from here. If you notice here, I have multiple bin files because I've done a couple compiles and this is normal. Now you wanna grab the most recent file. To find this out, you can right click on the STM32F401RE Creality folder and hit Reveal in File Explorer. And then you're gonna to wanna to go into this folder. Now, if we sort by date and modified, you can see here, this is the older file that I compiled about 10 minutes ago, and here's the one we just compiled. So if you made a bunch of changes to the firmware and you want to use your latest one, you're going to want to grab the one with the newest date. So in this case, this would be the one I would copy to my SD card. Now, this printer is one of these where it needs the bin file in a folder. So you have to have that STM32F4 underscore update folder on the root of your SD card. So if you do not have that and you put the bin file on your SD card for this particular printer, it will not update. It has to be in a folder with this exact name. So once you have the bin file, you put it in the folder and put it into the printer just like we did earlier with the pre-compiled file. It will update and then all the new changes will take effect. Now, the one other thing I will cover because this printer does come with an auto bed leveling sensor is I would highly recommend reading through our Unify 2 firmware ABL guide. You can get to that by going to our help center, which is the support.th3dstudio.com. You go here to info and other downloads, and then there's an article called Unified 2 firmware ABL information, and this applies to all sensors. There are easy ABL, the CR touch, the BL touch, and this just goes over updating your starting G code. Um, you'll want to update your slicer with our starting G code since you're using our firmware. It explains the Z height after homing and how to properly set your Z offset. 
It goes over different probing speeds, and it also has a section here along with a video on how to set your Z offset. This is very important if you have an ABL probe on the printer because without the proper Z offset, you're going to be printing too high or too low off the bed. And just like that, we now have an Ender 5 S1 with a much more functional firmware and an LCD that's actually able to take advantage of it. This is one of the first printers where we're doing the pre-compiled bundled firmware for the stock machine to make your guys' experience a little bit easier. Now, one of the big benefits of if you get the LCD kit or you purchase the firmware separately with the tech support add-on is if you need help compiling the firmware, we will do the compile for you if you just let us know what modifications you have to the printer, what features you want turned on, and then we can do that and send you back a bin file along with the configuration.h file so you have a copy of that. This printer was actually one of the most requested machines we had recently to put an LCD kit out, and after playing with the stock LCD on it, I can see why many people did not like it. It's really kind of a shame because this printer actually is built really well and I think Creality did a really good job, but again, like many of their other printers, the firmware is where they just fell short because they just don't have the expertise to properly set up the firmware and make it more user friendly. If you guys want to pick up the LCD kit in this video, you can go ahead and click the link in the video description. We have those ready to go. All the parts that are printed are our own design and they're printed in ABS by us here right in the US. And again, if you guys purchase the full kit, you also get access to our technical support should you need any help. One thing I will mention is if you put the LCD kit on the printer and your LCD starts showing garbled characters, I would definitely recommend checking out the 3v3 fix link in the video description because these boards along with the Ender 3 S1 boards are known to have issues with the 3.3 volt rail. And we have a really cheap little add-on that I showed when we were installing the LCD kit that fixes this. And there's a separate installation video for that product as well. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below, or you can also reach us by going to contactus.th3dstudio.com, and we'll be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching, and as always, happy printing.